Hey, boys and girls. Um, thanks for joining me here. We're at the uh, Hunterdon Courthouse uh, here in Flemington. And uh, I thought it'd be a good idea for us to start out here today as we uh, get into our next story uh, in the story. Uh, because uh, Courthouse uh, has a little bit to do with what we're going to be talking about today. See, uh, I don't know how many of you know what a courthouse is, but it's the place where uh, oftentimes if somebody is accused of doing something wrong in society or to another person, um, this is where they will oftentimes bring that person uh, so that they could be put on trial, so that uh, both sides of the story can be told, and then a group of people decide whether or not the person accused of doing something wrong uh, actually did something wrong, and then a punishment is given. Uh, sometimes it's a, a fine, sometimes uh, it's uh, uh, even as much as being put in jail for doing something wrong. Uh, we're going to be talking, like I said, a, a, a story in, in God's Word today uh, about a trial kind of thing that took place, and some people actually did wind up in jail. So I'll tell you what, let's, let's pause here for just a moment and give you a chance to listen to the story, and then we'll be right back to talk about it. Paul traveled from town to town, but now instead of hurting believers, he encouraged and taught them. On one particular journey, he and his companion Silas were constantly followed by a slave girl who had an evil spirit in her. The spirit gave the girl the power to tell people what would happen in the future. People paid the slave girl's owners for this knowledge. Paul and Silas could hardly do their ministry because the slave girl kept shouting and interrupting them everywhere they went. After a few days of this behavior, Paul decided he had to do something. He turned to the girl and shouted, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave her. The evil spirit left the girl immediately. Paul had done a wonderful thing, but the slave girl's owners were mad. Now the girl couldn't earn money for them. They took out their anger on Paul and Silas. They dragged them to the authorities of the city who arrested them, beat them up, and threw them in jail. Being in jail didn't stop Paul and Silas from praising God. They loudly sang praise songs while the other prisoners looked on, surprised at their joyful attitude. As they sang, a huge earthquake rattled and shook the jail. All the doors of the jail flew open, the chains fell off of the prisoners. The jailer was startled to find Paul and Silas still in the jail when they could have run away. He knew that Paul and Silas worshiped the one true God. What do I have to do to be saved? He asked. Paul answered, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. The jailer took Paul and Silas to his home where they shared the good news of Jesus with the jailer's family. Then the jailer and his family were baptized. Well, welcome back, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed uh, hearing that story read. Um, we've kind of changed locations. We've moved to the back of the courthouse now, and as you can see behind me, we're standing behind what used to be the jail here in Flemington. Uh, you know, jails are not very nice places. Uh, uh, there's a reason why they are reserved for people that do bad things and wrong things to others and to our society. Uh, because one of the things about being in jail is you have absolutely no freedom. You, you, you don't get to go anywhere. You don't get to take any trips. You're, you're in there all the time. And as you can see uh, by the windows behind me, uh, you're usually surrounded just by bars. Uh, and there's no way that you're going to get out. So it's not a very good place to be. Uh, the story that we just heard uh, about Paul and Silas uh, had them in jail. Do you remember? Uh, they were just going to the house of prayer, and, and on their way, they encountered this woman that had an evil spirit, as you remember the story, and, and uh, she was uh, 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 somehow gifted by that evil spirit to be able to tell the future, and, and, and she started walking around them and staying, hanging out with them, and, and talking and telling everybody how they were, uh, you know, they were, they were uh, uh, believers in the Most High God, and they were there to tell everyone how to, how to be saved, and all the rest of that stuff. And it just really wasn't going very well. 
Well, you remember from the story, uh, Paul uh, finally had enough of that, and he actually said to that lady, she, he said, you know, in the name of Jesus, you know, he, he told the spirit, the evil spirit that was inside of her to leave. Well, normally you would think that to be a good thing, right? But here's the problem. There were people that owned that lady, and they were making a lot of money based on her being able to try to try to tell people what was going to happen in the future. And when Paul told that evil spirit to leave and by the power of Jesus name, that's exactly what happened. She lost the power to be able to say anything about what was going to happen in the future. And so the money that they were making from her stopped coming in. They stopped making money based on what it is that she was doing. And that made them angry. Now, had Paul and Silas done anything really uh, against the law or anything really wrong or to hurt anyone? No, not really. But those men were so angry with Paul and Silas that they brought false charges against Paul and Silas. And they caused everybody in the city to be against Paul and Silas, even to the point to where the, 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 the legal people decided that they would take action against Paul and Silas. They had them stripped, they had them beaten, and they threw them in jail. And they told the jailer, they told the jailer, make sure that these guys don't get, don't escape, make sure they don't get out. So you know what the jailer did? He took them from like the normal part of the jail and he took them into what they called the inner part of the jail. And then he even shackled them. They put, you know, uh, 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 steel, uh, like, like bracelets and anklets around their ankles and tied them to the wall so they couldn't move and couldn't go anywhere. Not a very good situation. I want to I want to make sure that you don't miss something though because the Bible tells us, you know, when Paul and Silas are sitting in the inner jail and they have all these shackles on them, they can't move, they can't go anywhere. Do you know what they wound up doing? The Bible says that they started to sing praises to God and worship God. Isn't that amazing? I don't know about you, but if I were put in an inner jail cell, first of all, I wouldn't like any kind of jail cell, but if I ever found myself in one, falsely imprisoned, as they say, and I couldn't go anywhere or do anything, I'm not sure the first thing that I would think about would be to sing praises to God and to worship him, but that's exactly what Paul and Silas did. And as the story keeps going on, the Bible tells us that during that time of praising God, that all of a sudden the ground started to shake and the, and, and, the, and the jail cell started to fall apart and the jail doors were opened wide and the shackles on their wrists and on their arms just fell off. Which means that they could go, they could run, they could get out of there. And you know what Paul and Silas did? The Bible says that they stayed right where they were. Now, the jailer, he was afraid that he was going to be in trouble. And so he right away, he grabbed a lantern. He was going to go in there and try and find and, and, and see whether or not Paul and Silas were there. And if they weren't there, he was going to harm himself. But before he could do that, Paul and Silas just shouted out to him and said, Hey, it's okay. We're still here. We're here. And that's when the jailer came to Paul and Silas. And he looked at him and he says, Oh, my goodness. Please tell me what it is that I must do in order to be saved. And you know what Paul told him? Paul told him that you just need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And the Bible tells us that at that moment, that jailer was saved and he experienced joy and he was happy because he now believed in an amazing God that loved him and that saved him and rescued him. Boys and girls, it's really a, an, an interesting story and it tells us something. See, Paul was saved by God too. And after he was saved, he never stopped telling other people about Jesus, even when he was in jail. And that's something that we can learn. You know, God has, he has forgiven us, he has saved us. And now he has asked us to go and tell other people to, 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 about, about his love, about his gospel message, that they too might be saved just by believing that Jesus is who he says he is and that God is going to do what God said he's going to do. That's a wonderful message that we get to tell other people. And what we learn from Paul is that no matter what, no matter how hard that is sometimes, no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, hopefully it's not in jail, but no matter where we are or what circumstance we're in, we always should be bold to tell people about the love of God and the work of his son, Jesus Christ, for you and for me and for them. So 
Let's follow Paul's example and be messengers of God's wonderful story of love and redemption for all people. Boys and girls, talk about that with your mom and dad. Maybe you could talk with them about uh, times where they found it maybe difficult to share the gospel message with somebody and how they handled that or maybe what, what you or they can do uh, you know, the next time you have an opportunity like that, uh, so that maybe we would do a little bit better job of modeling, you know, our, our lives after what Paul did in spreading the gospel message. So just take a minute, talk about that as a family, and then we'll come back and close everything up with prayer. Well, again, welcome back, boys and girls. I hope you had a great discussion with your family about uh, you know, how we can model our lives more after what it is that Paul did and how he shared the message of, uh, uh, of the love of God with uh, so, so many people. Uh, why don't we uh, go ahead and wrap up this morning uh, by, uh, why don't we go ahead and wrap up today uh, by just going to the Lord in prayer. Would you join me, please? Go ahead and maybe fold your hands, bow your heads, close your eyes, um, and uh, pray with me. Uh, dear God, uh, we thank you so much that you love us uh, so much and that you uh, loved us enough to, to send your son Jesus to die for us. Uh, Father, we know that uh, you did that not just for us, but for all people. Uh, and so while we count ourselves among those that uh, uh, do believe in you and your son Jesus, we pray that you would also give us bold and courageous spirits like Paul uh, to, to spread that wonderful message of love with the world, with the people in our part of the world, the, the people that we go to school with, the people that we uh, play soccer with or go to dance with or what, whatever it is that you have us do. Uh, Father, we pray that you would always give us the courage to share the message, the saving message of your son, Jesus, with the people that we meet. And so uh, have that way in our lives, work that way in our lives. Uh, Father, not for, not for our glory, but for your glory and for the benefit of your kingdom. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, uh, that does it for today. Uh, thanks again for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again next week as we go into yet another exciting chapter of the story. Uh, just want to remind you to uh, like and share this video. <clears throat> Excuse me, like and share this video, uh, and uh, also to uh, subscribe to our YouTube cha channel uh, and, and share it with your friends. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.